Hey everyone, Jeff here. Uh, today's August 4th and um, I figured I'd jump online and do a vinyl update today. I've been accumulating a ton of records and uh, you know way more than I can actually show in this video but I'm just going to show some of the ones that I've gotten to lately. Um, you know and comment if you do this at all but I've kind of accumulated a bit of a backlog when it comes to records and you know, I've just been buying so much, going to flea markets, finding things for cheap and uh, you know I've kind of got to a point where I have more than I can listen to so I've just got you know stacks of things that I've purchased you know over the past couple of months and I haven't had a chance to listen to them yet so you know hopefully I get some more turntable time over the next few months and uh, you know I can start really attacking that because just lately with how busy everything's been I haven't had time so anyway what I'll show you today is just some stuff that I have gotten to a uh, pretty eclectic mix of prog, uh, jazz and there's actually a lot of metal in this video as well so hopefully you'll dig it what's going on in the background is Dregs of the Earth by Dixie Dregs uh, I picked this up at the Princeton Record Exchange this is only a couple bucks um, to be honest, this isn't really my thing. It's you know I've, I'm only listening listening to it for the first time right now. Just started side two. Um, from from what I can tell from side one, it was a little bit too straight ahead for my liking. Um, but still, great musicianship and uh, you know d definitely not a bad record. So Dixie Dregs. Uh, I got a couple other things at the Princeton Record Exchange. Uh, I picked up some CDs that I don't have with me at the moment, but a, another record I found there was October On by Barkley James Harvest. Uh, this is a really cool record. It's on that ugly MCA rainbow label, which I'll show real quick. I just, I can't stand the way this label looks. I don't know, something about it just rubs me the wrong way, but anyway cool album uh, very reminiscent of the moody blues we had a little bit of a conversation about that on Facebook uh, you know kinda lighter side of Prague with a little bit of like a pop edge but definitely a cool album and I love the cover art on this so Barclay James Harvest this next one is another one I found at the Princeton Record Exchange uh, the Masquerade Overture by Pendragon and I paid nineteen dollars for this which is significantly more than I typically pay for a record if you watch my channel uh, usually I'm a under five dollars type of person but I really really wanted this reissue um, I think this came out in 2013 this reissue and the album originally came out in 1996 um, and this is just one of my favorite albums especially in terms of neo prog you know that synth driven progressive rock sound um, this is just as good as that stuff gets and um, really, really highly recommended if you're a prog fan. So, really great record right there. Uh, I have a bunch of flea market finds to show here. Uh, and I guess I'll just go straight into that. So, first one here, Let It Be by The Beatles. Um, everyone knows this. I had it on CD, but I didn't have it on vinyl. I believe this is on the Red Apple label. Pull it out real quick just to check. Yep, Red Apple label. But uh, anyway, you know, not the best Beatles album by a long shot. Um, Abbey Road, Sgt. Pepper, Magical Mystery Tour, you know, the streak that they were on before this is much more enjoyable to my opinion, but still, you know, not bad. And it's, uh, you know, something that I needed in my Beatles collection. So anyway, got that. Also found this, Rare Bird. Um, it's my understanding that this album goes for a little bit of money online, you know, nothing crazy, but more than I'd be willing to pay. Um, this was a water damaged copy, you can tell, um, you know, it's not in the best shape, the cover isn't at least, but the record is pretty mint and it plays fine. Um, this is kind of like a psychedelic, hard rock, uh, progressive type of band. And this is a really good album, so you know to find this for a dollar was uh, definitely cool. And if you're a fan of, you know, maybe like uh, Deep Purple, something along those lines, you might enjoy this as well. I uh, got a couple of Ronnie James Dio albums here. Uh, Holy Diver. This is an absolute classic, and I found this for two bucks at the flea market. Uh, there was one guy that was selling a bunch of heavy metal albums, two dollars each, and this is just in great shape, so really happy to get that. This is one of Dio's best albums, if not his best album. Uh, and then I also found, well I actually have some more Dio albums, but I haven't listened to them yet. 
So I'll show those later uh, from the same seller. Intermission, uh, which is like a little mini LP, EP type thing. So cool to get another thing to add to the Dio collection. And like I said, you know, I'll show more of the stuff I got from this seller in a future video, just because I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet. Uh, another cool find was Game Over by Nuclear Assault. Uh, this is a pretty classic thrash metal album, and uh, I need to listen to it more to really solidify what I think about it, but it's definitely fast and aggressive, so um, if that kind of sparks your interest a little bit, I think this might be something that's up your alley. So, very nice to get a copy of that. Let's see what else I got from that seller. Okay. Uh, where is it? Uh-oh. Okay, my computer froze there. Iron Maiden, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Uh, this is one of my favorite Maiden albums, if not my favorite. Uh, really great stuff on here. It's showing Maiden um, with a more proggy edge, and uh, all the songs on here are really great. Uh, Moonchild, the title track, Only the Good Die Young. Uh, this is definitely one of their best albums, and I think after this album there was a little bit of a drop in quality uh, until Bruce Dickinson rejoined the band, actually, uh, for Brave New World. But anyway, this is a great album, and I was really lucky to find this for $2. So, very cool. Now, another one I got here is Destroyer, with uh, the EP Optimum DSI. And this is signed by one of the musicians in the band. I guess it's Mark, Mark O. Bennett. So, uh, I don't know much about this band at all, but it looks like they were fairly local to where I live in Pennsylvania and um, it's okay it's really nothing to write home about uh, to be honest I listened to it a few weeks ago I don't remember that much about it uh, just you know heavy metal thrash metal with nothing that really stands out um, but nonetheless it's definitely a cool piece to add to the collection and uh, happy to have that now the next one is something that I really didn't think that I'd get on vinyl for a while and that is Under the Influence by Overkill. I've had this on CD for about a year and since I started listening to it on CD it's become one of my favorite thrash metal albums. Um, just really exceptional. I haven't listened to everything that Overkill did but um, this is just unbelievably good. Songs like End of the Line especially just with the melodic singing and everything really really incredible thrash album and it's a shame that this doesn't get as much attention as like Master of Puppets or Rust in Peace something like that uh, because this is every bit as good for my money so um, Under the Influence by Overkill totally exceptional album uh, very happy to find that for two dollars uh, let's see got a couple more flea market finds here uh, Gatto Barbieri Caliente uh, it's good it's nothing spectacular in my opinion, but it's a good record. Uh, you know, if you like that kind of more smooth, uh, feel-good type of fusion, you know, with more of a pop edge, this might be for you. But for me, when I'm listening to fusion, I want something more um, with more of a bite, with more complexity, something more in the vein of like Return to Forever or uh, Mahavishnu Orchestra, something like that. This kind of just feels tame to me. But it's certainly not a bad record, and if you see it for cheap like I did, you know, it's worth picking up. Now, this next one I was so disappointed with, and that is The X Factor by Michael White. Now, I picked this up knowing nothing about Michael White, but I looked on the back, I looked at some of the lineup information. Uh, produced by George Duke, Napoleon Murphy Brock is on here, um, Bruce Fowler is on here. So, I guess the point here is, I saw all of this Zappa alumni, and I was expecting a really cool fusion album, and there are moments of that, but for the most part, this is just really generic kind of, you know, I love you songs with vocals, and it just, it's not up my alley at all. So, uh, kind of disappointed with this, but you can't be too disappointed when you only paid a dollar. So, still, you know, cool to get it for the people that appear on it, but this is not for me at all. Uh, two more records that I want to show today. First one is Carlos Santana and Buddy Miles Live. Uh, this one I think I only paid a couple dollars for. I found it at a flea market, and um, 
very cool record. These guys are just jamming and everything's on fire. Um, I need to listen to it a little bit more to totally grasp everything that's going on. But, you know, with a couple cursory listens, this is really, really, really good. So, uh, recommend it. And the last record I want to show here is Impressions by John Coltrane. Uh, this is one that I acquired in a, tra in a uh, trade that I did. I'll show the record real quick. I believe this is on the ABC Impulse label. It is. So it's kind of, it's a thin pressing. It's kind of got that dino warp to it, you know. But still, uh, nice label, and uh, it sounds pretty damn good to my ears. But anyway, this album is a little bit nostalgic for me just because um, in my high school jazz band last year, we played the title track here, Impressions, and... Um, you know, it was a lot of fun. I played drums on that, and, uh, you know, I always liked playing that song. I played vibraphone as well, you know, if the other drummer was playing. But uh, really, you know, just kind of cool memories with that song, and this album is very good as well. So, um, you know, I know that the stuff on Impulse and the John Coltrane albums tend to go for a little bit more money, but, um, you know, I've been lucky with building my Coltrane collection through trades. Uh, it's been really good. You know, I find a bunch of, you know, other things that are worth more money but that I already have and then, you know, I can build that stuff up to trade to get some of these jazz albums that I want. So, uh, very, very cool to get that. And that is all I have to show for today. Uh, plenty more records for future videos. I just need to get the time to listen to them and digest a little bit so that way I can talk about the records a little bit in the video. So uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this and also just leave a comment down below. Let me know how the quality of this is compared to my previous videos. Uh, I got a new laptop and I shot this using the webcam on that laptop. So um, I think it should be a slight upgrade from my phone but you know, if it's not, just let me know and I can go back to shooting my videos on my phone. So, thanks to everyone for watching and I will see you next video.